WSNY and WSNY HD Columbus. Welcome to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kvitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, and groundbreaking research. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. I'm general dentist Dr. Brian Kvitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the other great shows that previously aired, log on to DentallySpeaking.com or iTunes, keywords Dr. Kabitko or Dentally Speaking. Listeners should not use Dr. Kabitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kabitko. Time now for Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dentally Speaking. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hey, today is show number 377, so if you've never tuned in, you've missed a few shows. Yeah, we've been doing this for a little over seven years. Today, we're going to test your dental IQ, and we're going to bring you the top 10 dental system symptoms as reported by the ADA. All right, now, if you want to watch the show, you can go to ustreamtv.com. That's a U, the letter U, not Y-O-U, but ustreamtv.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on the word watch, it's a small little word, and then uh, when you get to a search bar, type in Dentally Speaking, and you'll be able to watch the show rather than just listening to it. You can do that on your tablet or on your computer. Okay? So, like I said, top 10 dental symptoms, as reported by the ADA, and... We're going to do a test of your dental IQ. Let's start with the, uh, the very first symptom. And guess what? I bet everybody can guess what that one is. It's toothache, right? Toothache. So if your mouth or your jaw hurt, could be from a toothache. Toothaches usually indicate that you have a cavity, but they can also uh, signal gum disease. In some cases, it can be a sign of an abscess or an impacted tooth. And a toothache is something that you really need to have tended to by a dentist. And you should do it right away because you want to prevent the tooth from dying. So, for example, if it's a cavity, and maybe it's a big cavity, but it's not yet into the nerve, if you get to your dentist soon enough, you can maybe just wind up with a filling rather than a root canal and a filling and then oftentimes a crown. So you save yourself a lot of money by going right away. So what is an abscess? Because um, we hear that word a lot. And it is associated with letting a cavity go. But what happens is, is when your cavity gets deep, it gets closer and closer to the nerve. And if it gets in there, if it gets into the nerve, besides the pain that you get, and by the way, some people don't get pain, it kind of dies a slow death. But anyway, what happens is, is the blood vessels inside your tooth, they die. And if they die, or when they die, you no longer have blood flowing in there, which means you no longer have your body's own immune system flowing in there. And there's no way for your body to kill the bacteria that uh, grow. So those bacteria live and breathe inside your tooth and they give off toxic byproducts and they leak out at the end of the tooth and you get, that's when your body can fight it. So it knows there's an infection, but it's down there inside the jawbone. And now your body brings like white blood cells to the area and that's, and that's an abscess. Okay. We see that on an x-ray. It's dark. We can see, uh, we can see things like, um, uh, well, it looks like a cul-de-sac. So, you know, if it's like a dark cul-de-sac at the end of a root. Okay, but you don't want to let it get that far. You don't want to wait that long. Okay, all right. So now the next symptom is sensitive teeth. A lot of people deal with sensitive teeth. If your teeth hurt when you drink hot or cold beverages, it's a condition called sensitive teeth. This can be the result of tooth decay, which we just talked about, a fractured tooth, worn fillings, gum disease, worn tooth enamel, or an exposed tooth root due to gum recession. The treatment's going to depend on where the sensitivity's coming from, of course. And I'll tell you what, the, um, that, that, that thing down at the gum line that I mentioned, that can be a real bugaboo because people don't even realize. Uh, I had a patient who, they had like a little wear spot down there and somebody had placed a filling and it, the tooth was still sore down by the root, you know, on the side by the gum. And then uh, I placed another filling and it was still sore. So I happened to notice that there was a, also a little bit of recession And so we went ahead and I did a connective tissue graft, grafted gum tissue over top, and the pain went away instantly. Before before they were even healed from the surgery, the pain went away. So that's really cool. And so, you know, you don't have to suffer with sensitive teeth. And, you know, there's those toothpaste like Sensodyne and whatnot. 
Uh, and those aren't bad, and they do work in some instances. But if you need a gum graft, Sensodyne's not going to prevent your sensitivity from that. Or if you have a cavity, it's not going to prevent that. So I think sometimes people use the over-the-counter products just a little too long. You know, you're kind of like, you're trying to avoid us, and you shouldn't do that. We're really nice people. <laughs> and we have drugs. We have local anesthetic. We have, you know, sedation. We have laughing gas. We have oral sedation. We have IV sedation. So, yeah, uh, make sure you call us up. Call me up. Call your dentist and get that checked out. Okay, so our first symptom was toothache. Our second symptom sensitive teeth, and the next one is bleeding or sore gums. All right, now, bleeding or sore gums can be a sign of gingivitis, an early and reversible stage of gum disease, or simply the result of brushing too hard or starting a new flossing routine. So, brushing too hard, that's a, that's a, that's a good one because people will scrub back and forth. You know, you have to be careful not to scrub back and forth because you can literally slice into the teeth down on the roots. Roots aren't covered by enamel, they're covered by a stuff called cementum, and that's not very hard. It's kind of soft, so you can slice into it, and then you get even more sensitive because now you're into the dentin. Or a new flossing routine, or more correctly, flossing for the first time, or flossing for the first time in several months because you have a dental appointment. <laughs> you're going in to get your teeth cleaned, and you want your hygienist to think that, uh, that you've been flossing on a regular basis, so you floss. And guess what? Uh, sometimes people floss a little too hard. The floss flips through there, and it actually cuts the gum. It makes like a little, um, a little slice in the gum, and that hurts. And so, you know, the best thing is floss a couple times a day. Don't just wait till right before you come to the dentist, because first of all, we can tell. <laughs> and secondly, your gums will be healthier, which is why you're doing it in the first place, right? Now, I said that we're going to also be testing your dental IQ. So... And that's going to be, uh, you're going to need these answers because when we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day in about five minutes, we're going to ask them. So pay attention and remember that uh, for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, you win free flowers from Vice Denver Florist. All right, so the first dental IQ question is, is this fact or fiction? A little bleeding of the gums after brushing or flossing is normal. Is that fact or fiction? Think about it for a minute. I'll give you another one. Aspirin placed next to a tooth is a good way to relieve a toothache. Is that fact or fiction? Think about that one, and we'll give you a minute, a minute or two. All right, how about this one? Sensitivity in teeth means you have decay. Is that fact or fiction? And one more. How about, uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, okay. Does, uh, okay, fact or fiction, sugarless gum is good can be good for your teeth is that fact or fiction all right so remember those and like i said i'm going to give you give you the answers here in just a second after we've covered a couple more uh top 10 symptoms so we've covered toothache we've covered sensitive teeth and bleeding or sore gums the next one is mouth sores all right now mouth sores their ty types of uh, mouth sores include canker sores cold sores leukoplakia and candidiasis now leukoplakia officially is known as a white patch. Candidiasis is a yeast infection in the mouth. They, they vary in severity and causes. Um, mouth sores can be the symptom of a disease or disorder, infection from bacteria, viruses, or fungus, or the result of irritation caused by braces, dentures, or the sharp edge of a broken filling or tooth. And again, you want to come to your dentist to get that checked out uh, pretty early on because it could be something serious. It could be something serious. You just want, especially that leukoplakia, that white patch. See, white patches can be signs of uh, early cancer, mouth cancer. We don't know until we do a biopsy. So you, or, or, you know, if it doesn't go away in a week or so, then you want to have it checked and we want to do a biopsy of it. Okay, so let's go back to the testing your dental IQ. The first one that I said, a little bleeding of the gums after brushing or flossing is normal. Fact or fiction? Well, that is... Never normal. That is fiction. Okay? Bleeding gums are never normal. Remember what I said. They're never, ever, ever normal. If your gums bleed when you brush, it could be a sign of gingivitis, the early stage of gum disease. It also could be something simple like brushing or flossing too hard. We mentioned that earlier. If your gums bleed regularly or enough to worry you, make an appointment to see us or to see your dentist. All right? So, a little bleeding of the gums is never normal. Next, the other one that we mentioned was fact or fiction. Aspirin placed next to a tooth is a good way to relieve a toothache. 
that is fiction. That's wrong. Placing an aspirin directly on your gum causes an ulceration of the tissue, commonly referred to as an aspirin burn. Aspirin can be effective as a pain reliever when you take it as directed. However, no home remedy can be placed. Um, you know, you're not supposed to like place it next to the tooth. Don't put an Advil there. Don't put a Tylenol there. Don't put anything there. Just call your dentist. So the best cure for a toothache is a trip to your dentist to find out what's causing the pain. And of course, if you don't want to get toothaches, do what we said earlier, which is brush your teeth uh, several times a day, each time after you eat, before you, uh, before you head out in the morning, you know, and, and before bed, and floss. Okay. So like I said, we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day here coming up. And so you may want to remember that bleeding gums are never normal, and it's never a good idea to place an aspirin next to a sore tooth. All right. Let's get, let's, uh, but before we do, we have to do this uh, like legal stuff. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, let me remind folks that the winner is going to receive free flowers from Vice Number Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 459-9769. But let me give you the question. The question of the day is, true or false? Bleeding gums are never normal, and it is never a good idea to place an aspirin next to a sore tooth. Is that true or false? All right. Again, the number to call, 459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Stay tuned to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. At Dr. Kavitko & Associates, a lot of people ask us if we're accepting new patients. They know we've been in business for 34 years and assume we're not. Well, guess what? They're wrong. We do accept new patients. After all, if we're doing our job correctly, we get our patients healthy, so all they need are routine exams, cleanings, and the occasional filling or two. That leaves us free to take care of you. So yes, we do take new patients, and we would love to take care of you, your family, and your friends. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Do you listen to Dentally Speaking? With well, you Dr. should. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. I bet everyone knows someone who is afraid of the dentist. In fact, 40% of Americans don't go to the dentist on a regular basis. The number one reason? Fear. Well, take heart. Here at Dr. Kavitko & Associates, we've been doing intravenous sedation since 1985, and we offer several sedation options, so we're certain we can help you. Want to be sedated for a filling? We do that. Want to be sedated for a cleaning? We do that. How about a root canal or a crown? We can sedate you for those, too. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. State ascoltando Dentally Speaking con il dottor Kavitko, qui sulla vostra radio preferita. Baby, you smiles forever in my mind and memory. I'm thinking about All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have some people on the line, and I'm going to look at my producer, and let's say, let's go with, I think that would be Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. Hey, Barbara, how are you today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you for tuning in, first of all. Appreciate it. And do you have an answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? I do. The answer is true. Did you know that? Um, I did. I thought I did, and then I heard you say it. So oh, okay, good, good. Then so, I knew it was true. <laughs> so now you know it's true. And Barbara, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a wellness consultant. Oh, okay. So you're supposed to know what it takes to make people well. Correct. <laughs> okay. That's why you knew that. Okay. Well, hey, thank you for listening and stay, stay on the line. We need to get the information where you can get those flowers from Vice Denver Florist sent to your place of business. Okay. Thank you very much. And thanks for a great program. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So now let's go back to our top 10 dental symptoms. And by the way, these are uh, according to the ADA. And we're also testing your dental IQ in the process. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is Dentally Speaking. 
and uh, we uh, are doing show number 377. So uh, if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. All right, so the first symptoms were toothache, and then we had sensitive teeth, and then we had bleeding gums, and then we had mouth sores, and so now the next one is bad breath. Bad breath can be caused by what you eat, not cleaning your mouth, dry mouth, smoking, or other medical conditions. Persistent bad breath can also be one of the warning signs of gum disease. Brushing twice a day and flossing daily are essential to reducing bad breath and preventing gum disease. Brushing your tongue can help too. And if you're concerned about what's causing your bad breath, see your dentist. There's a theme here, isn't there? There's a lot. The theme today is brush, floss, see your dentist. Because <laughs> uh, we'll be able to figure this out. Now, I'll tell you what. As a dentist, I do not eat onions or garlic. Almost never. If I'm not going to have to be at the office for about three days, so let's say, you know, on a Friday, uh, or maybe a thir oh yeah, if I'm not open on Friday... On a Thursday night, I'll splurge, but otherwise, I avoid onions and garlic uh, all the time because I feel like, as a dentist, the last thing a patient wants is to be trapped, you know, four inches from me, right? If I have bad breath. <laughs> so, anyway, but you know what? Bad breath is, uh, is interesting because you get stuff on your tongue, you have those little filiform papilla there, and you can get a coating, so it can be coated with, like, tobacco if you smoke, it can be coated with that onion and garlic, it can be coated with all kinds of stuff. And they make tongue scrapers. Now, you can brush your teeth with your, I'm sorry, your tongue with your toothbrush, or you can buy a tongue scraper. So you can watch your diet, you can make sure your tongue is clean, you can make sure your teeth are clean, because you know how, like, rotten food smells? Well, guess what? If you have a piece of rotten food caught between your teeth, it smells, you know, no, no surprise that you have bad breath. <laughs> Who would want that, right? So make sure you also clean your tongue, and it is, uh, there's a device that you can buy for that. Find it in most of the big dental aisles. All right, another symptom of the top 10 is jaw pain or popping, clicking in the jaw. So many things can cause these symptoms, and it makes, but it makes it difficult to diagnose because there's so much going on there. Now, our lower jaw is the only joint in our body that both hinges and slides. It's called a ginglomo-arthroidal joint. I can't spell it, don't ask me how. But it's, uh, <laughs> so, you know, when we, you know, it slides, it, it opens and closes, we do, we do a lot of chewing, and when baby, you know, when you're a baby, an infant, it's like the window to your world, right? We put a lot of things in our mouth, and how many people have done this? You, you pick something up with your fingers, like a hot piece of pizza or something, and it's like hot, 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 and so what do you do? You shove it in your mouth. <laughs> Why do we do that? Uh, if it's too hot to have in our fingers, we shouldn't be putting it in our mouth. But a lot of us do. So anyway, I would suggest you not do that. But now you can have clicking of your jaw without pain, and it's really not an issue. You can have pain without clicking, and, um, and you can have both together. Now, we can take an x-ray, we can take a tomogram, we can take a panoramic x-ray, and we can look and see if there's anything going on, like degenerative disc disease, some kind of arthritis, some calcifications forming. Uh, so, you know, it's important that if you have these symptoms, that you get to your dentist, and we'll take a look for you. In fact, my sister-in-law was in not that long ago, and she was having some terrible issues. Her physician had not been able to figure it out. And it turns out our x-ray showed that she has a degeneration of her disc. And in, rather than being round and kind of rocking in that socket like a ball and socket, hers has become flat. And every time she moves it, it grinds. So that can, be, that can be very painful. Looks like we're getting close to where we have to go to another break, but not yet. Okay, so let's do some more of uh, testing, your, um, testing your IQ. All right, pregnant women, here's a fact or fiction question. Pregnant women should pay extra attention to their dental health. Is that fact or fiction? How about dry mouth is due to aging? Is that fact or fiction? Okay, and here's another one. Uh, baby teeth don't need to be brushed because they fall out in a few years. Is that fact or fiction? All right, so we're going to come back to that. Oh, by the way, dry mouth is, um, well, actually dry mouth is the next one, isn't it? Yeah, dry mouth is the next one of the top 10 dental symptoms. I think maybe we're going to save that for when we come back so that you don't have to worry about missing out on these fact or fiction ones because I know people are on their way to church or they're getting ready. Let me just give you the answers to the, the last uh, grouping of fact or fiction questions. Pregnant women should pay extra attention to their um, dental health because all of the changing hormone levels that can occur with pregnancy, they can actually make some dental problems worse. So if you're pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant, 
schedule a visit with your dentist. All right. And it's important. You get things like pregnancy tumors. Actually, honestly, I diagnosed, there was this woman that came in. I'd seen her like a week before, nothing in her mouth. She came back for an, an ortho check because I do six month smiles and she had this growth of tissue between her upper front two teeth on the back. And I looking at it and I, and I said, uh, I'll make up a name. I said, Susie, you might, are you pregnant? <laughs> and she goes, I don't know. I don't think so. I go, was it possible you could be? She goes, yeah. And I go, well, I think you're pregnant. And turned out she was. So, <laughs> uh, baby teeth do need brushed. That is fiction. You should brush baby teeth. All right. It's important now and it's important later. That's because baby teeth can help your child uh, chew and speak. And they also hold space for the jaw in the jaw for permanent teeth that are growing in under the gums and, um, dry mouth is, isn't due to aging. Okay. So just because you're getting old doesn't mean you're stuck with dry mouth. It's not due to aging. Truth is dry mouth can happen at any age. It's important to diagnose the cause because dry mouth can lead to serious oral health problems, including dental decay. So, you know, again, if you feel like your mouth is constantly dry, talk to your dentist, talk to me. And by the way, there are over 400 prescription medications that cause drying of the mouth, decrease salivary flow. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy out there. And there's very little that can be done about it, but there are some things that we can do for you. Okay. So like I said, it's time to go to a break. You're listening to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitka. We're doing the top 10 dental symptoms and testing your dental IQ. And we'll be right back. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kubitko. ただいまあなたのお気に入りの番組からドクター・クビッコのデンタリースピーキングをお送りしています。Here at Dr. Kvitko and Associates, we are intensely dedicated to providing the absolute best dental care. The word mediocre isn't in our vocabulary. We just won't take shortcuts. Isn't that what you want in the person you trust with sharp objects in your mouth? Of course it is. However, people tend to assume high quality means expensive. But guess what? We're more affordable than you think. Our fees are about the same as one of those chains. But with us, you get our 34 years of experience and our unwavering commitment to quality. Discover for yourself. Call us at 614-262-9588. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the Dentally Speaking Show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now or send an email to drkavitko at aol.com. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch. Are your teeth crooked? And while you would like them straight, there's no way you would wear braces for two years. What if I told you that you could straighten your teeth in six months? Between now and your next cleaning, would you be interested? Call us today at 614-262-9588. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Convicto, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? You just put Together and you come real close. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby. Here we go. All right, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is Dentally Speaking, and today we're bringing you the top 10 dental symptoms as reported by the ADA, and we're also testing your dental IQ along the way. Okay? So let's see. The next symptom, one of the top 10 symptoms that we're bringing you today is oral piercing infection. Interestingly enough, this was not even in the dental journals when I was in dental school because people weren't doing that. But so for instance, somebody has a piercing right around their lip and that can get infected. So oral piercings can create a wide range of problems for your health, oral and otherwise. Your mouth is home to huge amounts of bacteria, creating an ideal place for infections to start. If you have any signs of infection, swelling, pain, fever, chills, shaking, or red streaked appearance around the site of the piercing, Contact your dentist or your physician immediately because the, the streaking especially could be like blood poisoning, okay? You could be allergic to it, all kinds of things. And in most cases, they do just fine, and I know they use surgical-grade steel and all that stuff, but infections do happen, and so you don't want to let it go unchecked, all right? Another one is cracked or broken teeth. Now, a cra and I did a whole show about cracked teeth maybe three, four weeks ago. Cracked or broken teeth can happen for a variety of reasons, Brittle teeth, teeth grinding, injury. The crack may be invisible to the naked eye and even on an x-ray, but they can be incredibly painful 
they can, re- can create bigger problems if left untreated. If you experience pain when chewing, see your dentist. All right, because chewing, is, uh, when it hurts when it chews, that's a sign that that tooth has a little crack in it, like a green stick fracture. And when you rub across it, you're physically actually like separating the two cusps away a little bit. It, it moves ever so slightly maybe a fourth of a micron or something. But when it separates and then it comes back, it's kind of pinching the little nerve fibers down inside. It used to be really hard to figure out. And now with uh, inter- interoral photos, we do these digital images where we can really zoom in. And also a cone beam, a 3D cone beam scan machines can sometimes pick up these roots, but not always. This is one of the toughest things we do. And if you remember the show that I did about it, it's one of the biggest reasons that people get unhappy, I guess, because they come in uh, with a sore tooth and we see an abscess and we say, you need a root canal, you need a big filling, you need a crown. And we do that. And it's like, it never really feels quite right. Uh, Sometimes it feels worse, never really heals. But within a few weeks or a few months, their tooth has broken. It's split down the middle. Well, that crack is completely invisible on x-ray. No way of knowing that it was there, but the person you would be unhappy if that happened to you. We understand that. And so people are going, well, you did a root canal and a crown on a tooth, and now we have to extract it, you know? And the natural feeling is to say, well, I, I, I think I want my money back. But, you know, something we just can't know everything, and some things are just uh, impossible to uh, diagnose with the tools we have available to us. But I will tell you this. The sooner you find out if you have a cracked tooth, especially if it's not one that's completely cracked in half, the better the chances of not needing the root canal and the better the chances of saving the tooth over the long haul. Okay, so you should definitely get it checked and if, uh, and you know, kind of listen to your dentist and kind of go through the, there's a protocol for that and hopefully you and your dentist can figure it out and, uh, and have a happy ending. All right, another symptom. Looks like we're up to the, is this the, oh, we're up to the 10th of the 10 symptoms is stained or discolored teeth. Over time, your teeth can become stained and change color. This is often the result of eating certain foods such as coffee or tea, smoking, aging, genetics, injury, or certain medications. Whitening options can include over-the-counter or in-office treatments. All right. Now, there is one stain that doesn't come off, or at least not very well. We can bleach it, but there's an intrinsic stain called tetracycline staining, and that's if you were given tetracycline when you were either still nursing or uh, right after, you know, right after, uh, well, as you became an infant or a toddler even, as the teeth are developing, if you have tetracycline in your bloodstream, it will permanently stain the teeth kind of a grayish pink. It doesn't happen as much anymore because the physician uh, community seems to understand that now, but there was a time when nobody really knew giving a child or an infant um, tetracycline was a bad thing. Okay, so let's go back to checking a little bit of your dental IQ. And um, let's see some more of these, uh, these things that I haven't covered. How about, oh, wait a minute, got to flip the page. There you go. Flossing twice a week is good enough. That is fiction. Cleaning between your teeth once a day with floss or interdental cleaners removes plaque from between the teeth, areas where the toothbrush can't reach, and it's essential in preventing gum disease. And remember how we talked about the, the rotten food, you know, that's down in there? The, uh, that kind of thing. And, um, and so you want to make sure that you do it every day, not just twice a week. Now, I do want to remind folks that I'd like you to go to my dental office Facebook page. It's called Dr. Kavitko and Associates. If you would like us, that would be wonderful. And also, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Dr. Kavitko. Okay? So, I'll tell you what. I think we're pretty much out of time. Yeah, we're out of time, aren't we? Okay, so... That's all the time we have. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, like I said. And be sure to join me next Sunday and every Sunday morning right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1. 
urging you to tune in next week for another exciting episode of Dentally Speaking with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to dentallyspeaking.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you would like to book Dr. Kavitko to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to Dr. Kavitko at Dentally speaking.com. That's D-R-K-V-I-T-K-O at dentallyspeaking.com. WSNY and WSNY HD Columbia.